Good morning, guys. I hope you're doing well. So today we'll see me install the crankshaft for this 08S build. And of course, also install bearings. I've got seals to install. Uh, and I'll see how I go with getting the top end in this video. Can't guarantee anything, but uh, we'll see how we go. So uh, I've checked the crankshaft. It's all good. The, uh, the bearing's fine. It's a big end bearing. There's no up and down movement at all. And uh, just for peace of mind, I'm going to put it in between two centers, a little jig I made, and we'll just check for run out. So, crankshaft bearing install time. The only thing you'll find if you buy them from Still as opposed to a bearing manufacturer is that they won't come with their shields, which is obviously a good thing. Uh, if you buy them from a bearing manufacturer, just pop the shields out, there'll be grease in there, clean it off with some carby spray, and you have the same thing, uh, so long as the bearing is a, a, obviously a known make. Uh, in this case, these are NSKs, but whether they're NSKs, FAGs, SKF, it's irrelevant. Uh, they're all great bearings, and... Uh, these are just a standard, what are they, 6202s, so you can get them anywhere. So I'll do these real time. What I'm actually going to do, I'm going to do them two ways. I'm going to do one with heat, and I'll do the other side with uh, pulling through a cold case. And it was something I learned from uh, Matt Olson. So uh, thank you so much, mate. That's a great tip, and I'm going to pass that on, uh, so I'll show you that as well. These feel great. They're really nice and smooth. It's always worth checking, because I guess you never know. You could get a dud bearing, but these are fine. These old cases, 08S, uh, the O sevens that I've done. I've done two OASs. I've done the 07, um, a few of the other older saws as well. They don't need as much heat. The, the tolerance between the bearing and the pocket um, is not as tight. So around 130 is normally good. We'll go for about 145 just to play it safe. But uh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> slip in and we can just leave that there and uh, I like direct high heat I can still hold this case it's, it's not even warm um, so I go maximum heat and powder coat is very heat resistant anyway so uh, I can hold this I can really direct the heat into that bearing pocket slightly surrounding areas and uh, there's no issues there at all. They sit in there really nicely. So the next method is, as I said, the one I learned from Matthew Olson. Thank you, Matt. I really appreciate it. It's just another means of getting the bearing in. This time it doesn't require heat. I don't tend to do it unless I have to. So if I used heat and the bearing got stuck, for example, that's when this method for me comes in. I know Matt likes to do it pretty much most of the time. So it's just another option uh, for you to work with. So we have some threaded rod and I've just used bearings as washers, but uh, I've got a few different size rods. Just find the one that fits the bearing the best, the inner race of the bearing. Uh, I've got a little bit of oil on this bearing. It's all been checked. It runs really nice and smoothly. It's nice and clean. A little bit of oil on the inside of the bearing pocket itself. And uh, got a little bit of matting here to work on. So I'll just get the bearing started, tapping on the outer race. So, threaded rod goes in one side. Just had a selection of washers the other side. They just take up the space of the thread. Snug it down. <coughs> I'll tell you what, let's get you in a top-down view. Hopefully that's a bit clearer. So bearing, washers, the nuts. Like Matt says, just a bit snug. That's all we need. And then I'll just back it out. Okay, so the next stage is uh, I've just literally slipped this crank in here. It's not all the way on. Uh, and that's to put the crank inside the bearing. So you can do it with heat again if you wanted to. I've got the crank tools, so uh, we're going to... Everything's been oiled already. Very simply slide it through. Again, these old saws, they're so delightful. How about I put you... Oh, it's fine. 
these old saws are so delightful in that they, uh, they're not super tight. So uh, there we go. So I'm just gonna tap these positioning pins home first and the gasket can rest against those. Um, if they're out too far, they end up causing friction and you end up having to put a lot more force on pulling that crank through. Whereas if they're just above the gasket, they align everything nicely, uh, but they don't uh, create any friction as such. Perfect, that's one. Your other alignment pin goes Okay, and now uh, we'll pull these case halves together. I'll pop just a drop of oil onto the crankshaft. So uh, I'm gonna pull it on about three quarters of the way and then I'm gonna insert some of the uh, bolts. That will then help everything be nicely aligned and we'll go from there. Yeah, this was my thing about the alignment pins. I only have them sticking out just slightly and uh, I find that works the best. But anyway, your mileage may vary. Left to tighten, right to loosen on this case. I've just taken the sheet off because the gasket was nudging up against it and uh, wasn't sitting nicely. So that's fine. Just gonna carry on. It's about there. We'll pop some of these uh, bolts in. And we're in. So now everything's together. Uh, I'm gonna just take out the screws. It'll only take a second and we will then pop them in with some Loctite. So I still haven't driven the pins home yet. They have to go home after you've done the uh, bolts, simply because if uh, not, you can hit the case halves slightly apart again. I don't think it really makes that much difference, but that's the way I do it. I found flatheads screws are super difficult to torque up. The, 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 the bit just keeps slipping and spinning. So uh, I do it all by hand and uh, I've never had an issue with it. And these are old cases. Don't overdo them. They really don't need that much torque. And the old mag is really not, uh, it's very easy to strip out. So just for my own peace of mind, it's not tight, tight, but uh, we'll just... Now that everything's sucked and held in place, we're gonna tap those pins home. Perfect. Perfect. Lastly, I'm just gonna double check. Still nice, it spins really nice and freely. It's not binding, there's no preload. So really simple, I just take a feeler gauge and I put it either side of the crank lobe against the bearing uh, races and I will just make sure it's nice and even. Uh, a very light tap is normally all it takes with a hammer. D worth mentioning, because I've done it before, uh, is just be very careful when you're tapping. Don't smash the crankshaft ends hard because you can either bend them or damage the threads. Sorry to be working on my lap again, but uh, it's just the, the best way that I can I can do it. It's a bit difficult when the crankshaft's in the the engine and I'm trying to tap seals in because of course I've got the stub of the crankshaft sticking out. So we're going to do what uh, what we can do. I've already, firstly, make sure that the circlip inside here that holds the bearing race in position or the bearing in position is not blocking the oil channels this side. I've spoken about that before. Uh, and then I've cleaned out the outer race. I'm gonna put some gloves on and I use Durco on the outside of the oil seals, especially, can you see that inside here? Can you see in there, uh, there? Can you see that side? It's got some damage on that, that um, Sealing, sealing, sealing face. Uh, that wasn't me, that was already there. Uh, and if I put the oil seal in, there's a very good, without Durco, there's a very good chance that we'll have a leak. So I always use Durco anyway, but um, yeah, it is what it is. The top of the Durco, I actually put a little bit of Vaseline on there, so I don't want to get that on my fingers. Uh, it just keeps the silicon uh, basically from, from hardening up in the tube. So just get rid of the excess to start with. Yeah, you lose a little bit, but it's not, it's not a big deal. And I'm gonna do a very light skim all the way around. So 
So I'm going to go just slightly thicker than I normally would for the simple fact that we have that damage there. Uh, I just don't want to risk it. So slightly thicker than normal, but that's no problem. The last thing we need to do is apply just a small amount of grease to the inside. Place it down. Good. Lovely. So there we go. That's that side done. And uh, just do, do the clear up. There we go. That's that side. Let's do the other side now. Ta-da! No prolapse seal. And uh, once again, we're beautifully uh, flush, just where we should be. There's a nice uh, sealing of the Durco, and uh, I'm really happy. Okay, guys, so that is uh, the bottom end done. Crankshaft bearing seals, everything's been put together, and uh, I think we're going to leave it there, and we'll catch up next time. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Bye.